Hey there everybody, this is Gary from Constricted and Addicted. Today I was trying to think about what a good topic would be to talk about and I thought, okay, we'll talk about tap training because I've heard a lot of different methods of tap training over the years and now that I own larger constrictors, I really understand now the importance of uh, tap training my animals and I don't know that you could really call it tap training. I think it's just called, in retrospect, changing their mode. But as I was coming in here to get set up, uh, with a larger constrictor, I noticed that one of them had gone to the bathroom and gone to the bathroom in a pretty large way. So I've got her soaking right now. And as I was looking at it, my first thought was, was like, ma'am, what am I going to do to clean this up? I've had some big messes before, but I don't think I've had a mess as big as this one yet. It was it was pretty intense. Uh, so what I did was is that I got it all cleaned up, got her uh, enclosure all disinfected, got it all put back together. I've got her soaking in water right now. And in that moment, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is what it's like to own a larger constrictor. So if you are into large boa constrictors or you are into reticulated pythons, always remember that when that little animal gets big, Georgia is in no way, shape or form a large reticulated python. She's still a small reticulated python at eight feet long. Uh, but she makes some very big messes. And as well as Athena over here, my seven foot boa, she also makes some very big messes. And that's not something we think about when we take on the responsibility of owning a very large constrictor. So if you've got a reticulated python or you've got a boa constrictor and it's still very small and you hold on to that animal until it gets very large, be prepared for the messes that come with that large constrictor. But what we're gonna talk about today is tap training. So we're gonna go ahead and get King Darius here. King Darius is just one of my most amazing BCC animals. I love this guy to death. He's got such a beautiful red tail, but we're gonna put him back and I'm gonna show you what I do when I get my animals out. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with Cora. And as you can see, Cora's at the glass. She's a very, very inquisitive animal. But the reality is, is that she's a reticulated python and she has the ability to have a food response that is just out of this world. So what I like to do is always have this hook ready. And I'm going to open up her, her, uh, her glass. Now, she is very, very docile. And this is what I do to let her know that I'm coming in. Tap training, I've seen people actually like tap their snakes on the head. And, and I don't think I'd wanna do that to my animals. Uh, and what they're doing is, is they're breaking the response of food. As you can see, she's pretty well ready for me to take her out. She's, she's almost like the little diva, right? That says, hey, yeah, I wanna come out. Uh, but she is probably not one in a million. I know people can do this, but even if I, I wouldn't just reach in and grab her. What I want to do is let her know that, hey, I'm coming in. So she doesn't have a food response right now. She's pretty well ready for me to come and get her. Cora is very easy for me to get out. And, and the reason I wanted to get her out first was uh, because some reticulated pythons may not require tap training. And, and I don't, necessarily suggest or recommend that. I, mean, I don't care, in, in my collection of snakes, I don't care how comfortable I am with, with the animal, uh, there's always that chance and that's how we get bit. Uh, I trust Cora, I really do. Uh, I have enough room with her where I can actually not use a hook and just rub her back. But what's gonna happen one day is, is I'm gonna get comfortable doing that. And then she is going to latch onto me because she thinks she's getting fed. But the reality is, is that uh, I put a lot of trust into this animal. The other thing is, is that I handle my animals every day. 
Uh, most of these animals are cycled through and they're held within a 24 to 48 hour period. So they're used to touch, they're used to being out, they're used to being socialized with people. So uh, that might be a, another reason to why my snakes, uh, Cora in particular, may be so docile and socialized when I'm getting her out. But uh, as you can see, I mean, I really didn't need to rub the hook on her but I don't want to get to a point where I feel like I don't have to because uh, that's, that's when accidents happen. And that's the difference between getting bit and, and being safe. So uh, Cora is always a beautiful animal. Uh, she shed not too long ago. If you, if you know anything about her, she's from New Shed Serpents, uh, Chris McVicker, and just, she's like my best friend. She really is. And, and I'll say that about all my retics once I have them all out. All right, so this is Matilda. Matilda has pretty much the same uh, uh, feeding response as a reticulated python, if not more so, I think. So what I do with her is I, I see that she, she wanted to go after the hook. She knows I'm in here now. And what I'm going to do, she's under her, come on. What I want to do is turn her around and get her out of her food mode. Actually, she's not in her hide. She's on the other side of me. So what I do is I'm going to bring her out this way. And now she's out. She's out of her food mode. So I'll just reach in there and get her out. And she's fine. That can be a little bit daunting for somebody that's uh, inexperienced with an animal that has a food response where you go to get that animal out and then all of a sudden it's taking a strike at you because you know it, it thinks it's getting fed. And this animal in particular has developed that more as she's gotten older and bigger. So it's one of the reasons that it's very important not to drop your guard because I used to be able to go right in there and pick her up. And now I can't. Uh, I, would, I would not put my hands in that enclosure uh, without first letting her know that I'm coming in simply because that she has probably one of the strongest feeding responses of any snake that I have right now. But once she's out, she's fine. You know, you, she's very handleable. Uh, she's a great, great boa constrictor. Uh, I've watched her grow up, but I've also watched her personality change a little bit as well as she's grown up. So. Tap training my reticulated pythons, or I don't like that term, tap training, because it just sounds like you're tapping the snake, and I, I do not do that. I simply rub that hook, but rub training doesn't sound right either. So uh, tap training the snake, uh, it's important because you just never know. You know, it, it could be like with Cora, it could be that one time that you think that she's gonna be okay and I put my hand in there and she bites me and she, uh, she thinks that she's getting fed. And it's not at all a defensive response. It's, the, it's just the simple fact that these animals think that they're getting fed. So she is one of the biggest reasons I have right now. Tap training is important. Uh, the rest of my animals don't really go after the hook like she does when she uh, first gets out. Uh, but again, it can happen. All right, so the next one I'm gonna get out is Clarice. Clarice is up here in this enclosure. She's, again, very, very docile for the most part. Uh, she is sitting back here behind her hide, all comfy and cozy on the heat. And what I'll do is just rub her. Let her know hey, I'm here. Now I, I want to make sure she understands that I'm here. And what I'll do is I'll just pull her out a little bit. See what she does. There she goes. And she's moving away. Now again, here's another animal that I have never had a problem getting out of her enclosure. She's really good. She's extremely docile when she's out. Very curious, very inquisitive has never ever shown an ounce of defensiveness or you know anything out of the ordinary. Uh, but I don't treat her any differently. I simply rub her with a hook, say, hey, I'm coming in. And uh, 
she just kind of moves a little bit. And as soon as they move and they and their head goes the other way, that to me lets me know that if they were in a feed mode, they're out of that feed mode. You want to take them out of feed mode and put them into think mode. And um, and that's this is what's working for me. We're gonna do one more snake real quick, and I might even pull Athena out. And because she's so large, it's easy for me to uh, navigate her out of her enclosure and actually use me as the hook because her head's so far away. Here we've got Ruby. Ruby's right by the glass, so usually I can open it up. And she gets real curious immediately. As Soon as I open up, there she is. And I'm just rubbing her body. She's looking at me. She hasn't really done anything yet. If they don't do anything, I just might move them. Just a little bit to kind of get them into think mode. And I'm pretty certain that I could pick her up right now without anything happening. And there she is. And there you have it. Uh, my reticulated pythons are fairly easy to get in and out of their enclosures. Once they're out, they're hard to get back in. Uh, but it's always a safety precaution for me to go ahead and let the animal know, hey, I'm coming in. And how I do it is simply by rubbing my hook on their back. And if they don't acknowledge that I'm coming in, like Ruby, for instance, she just kind of looked at me and said, what are you doing, right? Uh, then I'll move their body a little bit just, just to get them to think. Reticulated pythons are absolutely, in my opinion, the smartest snake, captive bred, other than I've heard king cobras are, are smarter, but they're always thinking and they're always moving. And it's just important to me that to maintain a consistent and healthy relationship with this animal that I don't take advantage of it. And just reaching in and grabbing one of my animals to get it out is, it, to me, that's kind of taking advantage of the situation. Uh, because again, I don't know if what kind of mood they're in, uh, they're pretty much on a schedule and this is their feeding weekend. So this was actually a really good time for me to do this because they're, they're hungry and they could have been expecting food, but as you saw, they, they really weren't. They were just kind of uh, happy to get out and, and hang out with me. And I love these animals so very much that, um, you know, it's important to me for my relationship with them that uh, I do everything I can to protect me and to protect the animal. I um, mean, it, it's an extra minute to rub the animal with the hook uh, and, and change his thinking so that both of us have a positive experience. That's what works for me. So I will go get Georgia out of the soak. She's been in there for about 30 minutes now, I think. And uh, before I get her out, I wanna let you guys know, I did get a new uh, reticulated python uh, 68.75 percent Kalatoa Super Dwarf uh, from Chris McVicker and what a beautiful relationship we are having. I don't have her out right now because A she's in quarantine and B I had her out earlier so I'm minimizing my sessions with her for you know I had her out for about 45 minutes earlier today and everything is going great. I mean the first day was okay you know she'd been on a 2,000 uh, mile flight to get to me and then of course the second day she was acclimating and she did take a strike at me and she hissed at me but once I got her out and I handled her she was fine and we haven't had an incident since other than again when you own a reticulated python and they go to the bathroom they make a mess she made a mess of her enclosure and i put her into soak yesterday so that you know to get the stuff off of her and she was not happy about the soak uh, she didn't try to bite me but she certainly bolted out of my hands once i got her out of that soak so i just let her sit and chill out and acclimate back to her her uh you know her normal self waited till today and got her out and she was just fine so um you know these guys right here in my opinion they are game changers they really are they're so inquisitive personable and smart and uh, i mean I, I love them to death i will be getting another reticulated python uh i've been talking to chris again he just had a litter a 50% Slayer, 25% Super Dwarf, and I'm really, really interested in possibly bumping up to a uh, retic that could po potentially get 12 feet long. 
These guys will, this one here, I think will be my largest one. She is only 25% Kalatoa. So she actually has the potential to get the largest. Ruby is only a year old and she's pretty much six feet long. So uh, Cora is three years old and she's six feet long. And then I've got Clarice who's two years old. She's about five feet long. Uh, I've got Olive over there in quarantine. She's probably six feet long and two years old. And then we've got Georgia who's four years old and she's eight feet long. So I've got some pretty good size reticulated pythons uh, for a smaller size, uh, calling most of them super dwarfs. But they're such good animals uh, that I'm, I'm really now interested in stepping up to a, a, a dwarf uh, and seeing what the Solaire uh, slash Super Dwarf is like. So I'm gonna go get Georgia and then I'll be back. Before I go get Georgia, I gotta get out Willie, AKA David Coverdale. Uh, Willie just shed the other day and he doesn't hardly ever get any film time because he's a ball python. And he is currently on a six week hunger strike. He has not eaten, but uh, he just shed, so I'm pretty sure that he is going to eat this weekend. He's such a wonderful animal. Uh, I swear, I think that he is a boa trapped in a ball python's body. Uh, the guy is just a wonderful, wonderful animal to have. He's got a great temperament. I, I love this guy to death. And uh, he's great with the grandkids. Grandkids love Willie as well. They're the ones who named him. Uh, just, just a wonderful, wonderful little guy. Uh, he's got a great, great attitude and a wonderful personality. So Willie, AKA David Coverdale. Here she is, my mess maker. And I love her to death, Georgia. My unknown, possibly 50% Kalatoa, uh, super dwarf reticulated python. And this girl is just such a sweetheart, so gentle and very curious. But for her size, she makes big old messes. Big old messes, girl. Uh, but you know what? That is life of the retic. Uh, they're not the cleanest animals in the world when they go to the bathroom. So uh, think twice about that. If you want to own, own a large snake, whether it's a boa constrictor or a retic, they make big messes and they don't clean up after themselves. So you're the one that's got to do it. You guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back. Thanks. Big shout out to uh, Abby, the curly haired keeper. Uh, I really appreciate the video. If you didn't get to see that, we did five things that you should know before you buy a retic. Uh, it was a great video to do with her. I totally appreciate her. Uh, if you have not checked her out, check her out on Instagram at The Curly Haired Keeper. And she's also got a YouTube. Check that out, The Curly Haired Keeper. Uh, she's got some wonderful content. And again, Abby, thanks for uh, stepping up with me on the last video. And you guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.